Hey, so I wanted to show you an example of a poor curve. So take a look at what I have here on the screen. I have um, a curve. So that's one spine all the way across. And looking at graphics, and typically a student would say, yeah, it's not too bad, right? Doesn't, it's not a straight line, I can tell you that right now, but it doesn't look too, too bad. But I wanted, I wanted to exaggerate uh, an issue that students have when it comes to surface modeling. Let me, let me show you the problem with this curve. This is supposed to be a smooth curve with no points of inflection. Let me show you a problem with this. So I'm going to unhide my porcupine analysis and look what I have. Every time the porcupine analysis crosses a curve, that's a new point of inflection. So I've got one, two, three, four, five points of inflection where I didn't want any points of inflection. So what caused this problem? Well, the problem uh, came from too many points on the curve. And my rule of thumb for this class is keep your points, number of points to a minimum. I could have gotten away with a third degree curve, or second degree, let's, second degree maybe third degree, but let's see, I can, I can try to get away with a second. Now the issue here is I do, for my design intent, I do want it to go, I do want it to go uh, tangent to the y-axis here and here. But what I ended up doing here, this is called uh, curve fitting, and I'm forcing my curve to fit to these points. And so what's happening, the spline is passing through all these points at the curve, the surface itself, or the curve itself does not look bad on its surface, but when you throw a porcupine analysis on it, wow, you can see a really, really poor curve. So how might I fix this? So what I want to do, I want to hide my porcupine analysis. I want to leave this, I'm actually going, I'm going to leave this in the background. So, so tell you what, I'm going to hide it for now. I'm just going to use, I want to see what I can do to keep, by the way, I'm not using that point, so I'll just get rid of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to make a curve. I'm going to go between there and there. So that's just two points. So that's a first degree curve, just a straight line. Let me add my tangencies. So I'm going to do a from curve. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll do explicit. Since, well, I can do from curve. Let's do from curve. I want to do the y-axis. And then I'm going to do for the second point. I'm also, notice I can do the y-axis here, and it doesn't have to necessarily go through the point. Now, so notice what I have. So a lot smoother. If I were to throw a porcupine analysis, you would see one point of inflection. You've got to have one point of inflection. It's, it started off as a first degree. I added a tangency here, which made it second. Then I added a tangency here, and I made it a third degree. And just the way it's forming, it has to have one point of inflection, which I guess is fine for what I want to do with it. So if I threw a porcupine analysis on that one, you should see that one nice point of inflection in the smoothness of my curve. Now, you may go, well, you know, it's not passing through the points. Well, I didn't really necessarily want it to pass it through the points. What I was trying to do is fit a curve through this area, and I had trouble. So I just added more points, added more points, which is not the way to do it. The best way to do this, and since I did from curve, I got some axes here, I can control. I'm gonna to try to rele release the tension here just a little bit on this one. This is down here on this end. That's still not a good curve, but let me, let me, let me play around with it a little bit. It's still not bad, but notice I can manipulate manipulate these tension values. So as I'm increasing this tension, it's pulling more down. As I release the tension, it goes a little more up. Um, I've still only got one point of reflection. I actually like just the one and one tension. In other words, no modification to the tension. That's not a bad curve. Now, it doesn't pass through the points, but I have to ask myself, is it necessary for it to pass through these points? Uh, if it's necessary to pass through these points, then we've got an issue. We've got to do some more. But why? I mean, why would it? Why would you want it to pass through these points? Uh, you're styling a surface here. The only reason I can think of it, I can't think of any reason why it would pass through these points. But that's a nice, smooth curve. you got 
nice flow of curvature so the curvature is steep and then it gets more shallow and there's no curvature here and then it reverses direction and goes back the other way I could possibly even change so what happens if I change this to curvature that I don't like uh, so just because it's curvature so boom, boom, it's actually, well it's not bad there's still only one point of inflection uh, but that's that's really not bad either but either way but I'm trying to minimize the points of inflection so if I were to throw in that old porcupine analysis, there's what it would look like on that particular spine. Not as good of a curve. I hope this helps. Like and subscribe.